This lecture introduces diagonal and triangular matrices. So first, let's talk about tri triangular matrices. So there's two different types of triangular matrices. It can be upper triangular or lower triangular matrices, right? For upper triangular matrices, if a, a matrix, a square matrix n by n, it says to be a upper triangular matrix if for all i is greater than j, then all the entries a i j will be equal to zero. Again, i is the row and j is a column. All right, and then a square matrix. is said to be a lower triangular matrix if reversely for all i all the entries a i j equals to zero well here are some examples like two a couple of examples of upper triangular matrix and a lower triangular matrix so if you look at this matrix a here right here is, is it it is an upper triangular matrix because you can actually you know, draw a um, triangle here, right? This in this triangle, entries can be zero or non-zero, but in this triangle here, the entries have to be zero for this matrix to be a upper an upper triangular matrix. All right, so let's look at this uh, entries here. This entries is a two one. Okay, so i is greater than j, then the entry has to be zero. Now, if we look at this matrix B, it's a, an example of a lower triangular matrix. And it's lower because as you see, you can draw a line through the diagonal and then you can form a triangle. And this triangle, again, entries can be zero or not, or not zero, but in this part, like the upper part of this matrix, all the entries have to be zero. So if you look at this entries here, this is A, this is B, right? Uh, one, two. Okay, it's B, one, two, I is less than J, then this entry has to be zero. All right, now we can talk about um, diagonal matrices. So diagonal matrices is actually an, a special case of triangular matrices, okay? So the uh, a matrix is, again, a square matrix A is said to be diagonal if, if for all the entries A, I, J, if I is not the same as J, then those entries have to be zero, okay? And when n, when i equals to j, entries can be zero or not. So if you look at these two examples here, if I draw just like a line on the diagonal of the matrix, the square matrix, then you can see that the entries inside, uh, all the diagonal entries, right, where um, a equals to j, so this is a, one one and a three three right where i equals to j then um the entries can be zero or non-zero but when i is not the same as j's for example a three one then this entry has to be zero okay Let's look at matrix b here matrix b is again the diagonal entries can be zero or not zero, but everyone else have to be zero. All right. Now, um, if we look at this matrix A, okay. If I look at this matrix A, I can use row operations to reduce this matrix A to 
a upper triangular matrix. So as they say, as they, I'm, I'm using the same process as how I would use um, a reduced row echelon form, right? So I just, for the first operations, I take R2 minus three R1. For the second operation, I take R3 minus two R1. And then I get to this matrix here after these two operations. And then I need to make this entry equals to zero. So I take R3 plus R2, get to this matrix. And this matrix here, and if you follow the process of reduced row echelon form, you will get to this point. And as you look at this matrix, it's an upper triangular matrix. Great. So I can reduce a square matrix to an upper triangular matrix. Now, um, for the three row operations that I just used, I can come up with each of the row operation, I can come up with an, an elementary matrix for each row operations. That's where we learn how to come up with an elementary matrix based on a row operation. So I have three elementary matrix matrices here that are corresponding to these three row operations. Now, if I, um, and I can see that if I multiply this three matrices, like E1, right, and then I multiply to E2 to the left and I multiply to E3 to the left here, I will get this upper triangular matrix. At this point, this, this, this is the upper triangular matrix and then one more thing that I need to add is I need to add, I need to multiply this everything here to A. Okay, so A, and then when I multiply a elementary matrix to A on the, uh, on the left of A, that's is when I apply the first row operations and then I apply the second row operation and then I apply the third row operation. So I multiply E3, E2, E1 to A, to get my upper triangular matrix here. Okay, that's one thing you can keep in mind. Well, you can use elementary matrices to reduce your uh, matrix to an upper triangular matrix. And now from each of this elementary matrix, I can find a corresponding inverse matrix. So I know that Elementary matrices are non-singular and there exist um, a unique inverse matrix with the same type. So from E1, I can find the inverse of E1. And as you can see that the inverse of E1, it's just the, uh, you can see that in E1, you have negative three here, right? On the second row. And then in the inverse of E1 is positive. You just flip the sign to get the inverse matrix of an elementary matrix. For E2, when I see you have negative two on the third row here, um, and you just need to flip the sign to have two here. And E3, you have one on the third row, second column, then you just flip it. And everyone else just look similar to identity matrix, okay? We know how to find all the elementary matrices. We know how to find all the inverse of those elementary matrices. And the one thing that I want to mention is if you multiply these inverse matrices together, you will get a lower triangular matrix in this form. Okay, if I take three E3 inverse, multiply to E2 inverse, okay, then I will, and then I multiply to E1 inverse, then the result matrix will be this lower triangular matrix. How you can form it, you have negative one here, right, and then you have two here after you multiply it, and then you have three here after you multiply them together. So I just show you an example of how you can use elementary matrices 
to reduce a square matrix to a um, upper triangular matrix and then you can use those elementary matrices by their uh, inverse matrices and then you can form a lower triangular matrix by multiply those inverse together in the reverse order and you can buy this all together I want to point it out that using the uh, shoe sock theorem um, property this will be equivalent to e1 e2 e3 and inverse 